guys. I've got all my shark socks today just for everybody here. I'm super pumped and excited to be talking about sharks. By far my favorite, favorite animal ever. We're gonna wait and let a few more people get um, online before we start. So just hang with us for a few seconds here. Okay, do you have any shark ticks? Um, I'm trying to think. I can't, nothing's coming to the top of my head. That's okay, this is going to be shark-tastic. It will, it's going to be a jawsome time, y'all. Hmm. Shark jokes. Do you have any other jokes? Mm, no, I'm more of a witty person. I, I know, have, I don't have jokes, jokes either. I don't jokes I just kind of, they kind of come to me. Oh, well, there's always fish your friends, not food. Mm -hmm. Bruce was my role model when I was a kid. Like, I love. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. Hi, guys, and welcome. I just want to thank you for tuning in today as we talk and dive into a little bit more about sharks. My name is Katie Wells, and I'm a... <laughs> Please remember if you're watching this now or want to watch it later, um, we will be posting the link um, for YouTube in the description box below. So you can feel free to turn, turn this back on and watch it anytime. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in and start talking about sharks. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about the differences between elasmobranchs, which is the overall category of sharks, rays, and skates. But for this class, we're just going to be talking about sharks and rays and the difference between ray fin fish. So this would be like Nemo, those clownfish um, that you think of, or flounder if that helps you, um, versus like Bruce since we're using the Nemo references here. So to start off with, sharks have what we call cartilaginous skeletons. Um, this is like the end of your nose, um, so it's very flexible and can move very easily in the water. So um, if you ever think of a shark swimming, they're very agile and move very gracefully through the water because of these type of skeletons that allows them to bend and move very easily. Where ray fin fishes have what we call a bony skeleton. This is just like our skeleton, so we're kind of limited in how far we can move and bend. Um, so they are as well in the water. Um, so this gives the cartilaginous skeleton a little bit of an advantage for when you're talking about movements and such. Another difference that we have here is the, in the type of gills. Now all fish, and sharks are fish, um, they're just a different type. They do have gills, so both ray fin fish and sharks and rays have gills. Um, it's just the difference in how they appear on the body is kind of the main um, difference here. So ray fin fish have what we call an operculum. So this is basically a hard covering over their gills to help protect them. Um, if you ever put your hand like on the bottom of a vacuum, you kind of have that suction going. This is the same thing that the operculum does. So by having that covering, it allows for a suction or a vacuum um, for the water to be pulled over the gills. So this allows them to kind of stand or to be still in the water instead of constantly moving. Um, since all fish need the water of their gills to breathe, um, this allows them to just sit there and kind of pump that operculum instead of moving. Where sharks have open through the gills. Another difference here is between their oily liver So another difference that we have here is between how they kind of stay up in the water column. This is called buoyancy. Um, when you don't sink and you don't float, you just kind of stay neutral in the water. Um, so this is what all fish try and aim for. They just do it in different ways. So we have fishes here that use swim bladders. So this would be like your pool floaties where it's a kind of um, an air sac that is in their body. So it allows them to move up and down in the water. So just like those little arm floaties that you have on in the pool, um, the same thing applies to these types of fish. Where sharks have oily livers, so they don't have that special sac in their body, um, but their liver is full of all these oils. So like if you've ever combined oil. Okay. So 
So sharks have what we call oily livers, sink to the bottom, where they don't constantly float to the top. It keeps them nice and neutral in the middle. A few other differences that we have between sharks and rape and fish are that sharks have what we call placoid scales. Um, so this is basically a very, very small scale that we can't see with our eyes. So sharks have what we call placoid scales. These are basically very, very small scales that are made up of enamel. So the same thing our teeth are. Um, they also are sometimes referred to as dermal denticles because of this. So when people think of sharks, they mostly think of like kind of like a slimier type skin. They don't really think that they have scales, but they do. They're just very small. So um, we have an actual shark skin right here that you can kind of see it has the texture to it. But unless you had a microscope, you would not be able to see the individual scales on this shark. Scales of ray fin fish. Um, these are very easily seen um, on the body of fish, as well as after you handle them, sometimes they come off on your hand and you can see the little circular scales that they leave behind. And then finally, another main difference between sharks and ray fin fish are their types of teeth. So ray fin fish usually have one or two sets of teeth that are um, built into their jaw. They're probably just my parents. Oops. So besides the one set of teeth that the ray fin fish have, um, these sharks have what we call replaceable teeth. So they constantly are getting new teeth. Um, so a big difference between the elasmobranchs are um, between rays and sharks are one, their body structures. So usually rays are kind of the flat type body structure and sharks have more the classic sharky look. Um, so those are a big difference between them as well as their um, teeth types. So what we have here is a shark jaw and you can see um, the two rows right here. These would be the teeth that are up and usable um, at that time for the shark but they constantly get replaced. So right here where my finger is would usually be where the gum line starts and all the teeth below here would be constantly being made and brought back up. So just think of those escalators at the mall, how they continually bring up new steps. That's the same exact thing with the teeth going on here in the sharks. And right here we have a stingray jaw. So this would be the um, actual jaw structure of the stingray. And these plates right here are the teeth. So they have very flat, strong teeth because they eat mostly shelled organisms like mollusks and um, clams and stuff. So they need a nice hard structure to be able to break these open. Um, so usually when they feed, they make this type of motion where they grind up their food instead of the biting force of a shark jaw. So while these are some of the main differences between the two, they also, um, all fish, have what we call a lateral line. So this is basically a sentry line that runs the whole length of the fish. So these are both in sharks, rays, and all ray fin fishes. This basically helps them to feel what is going on in the water. Um, so this is a very long canal type structure that's connected to the nervous system. And inside that structure, it's basically these hollow um, cells, kind of like jello if you ever touch it and the whole thing moves. That's very similar to like when a wave comes in the water, this whole cell will move and triggers the nervous system to tell the shark, hey, there was movement over here, um, or other fish as well. So since we're talking about shark structures, um, we're gonna get into a few more specific things just about sharks. Um, so to start off here, we're going to talk a little bit about shark eyes. Just like cat eyes have that eye shine that you think of at night, sharks also have the same thing. So they have what's called a tapetum lucidum, which is basically a reflective layer in the back of a shark's eye, kind of like a flashlight. If you ever turn it on and off real quick, it's very similar to what happens here at the back of the shark's eye. So this allows them to see a little bit farther in the water column. Um, so that way they can see what all is going on to catch their prey and things like that. Another interesting thing about sharks is they actually do have ears. Most people don't think that, but they do. They're very hard to find though. They're just like a pin sized hole at the top of the shark's head. 
Um, and this connects to what we call their circular ear canals. So if you were to hold three hula hoops and kind of combine them together, this is similar to the structure that's going on in the inner ear here. Um, it basically allows for the sound waves to kind of move throughout that ear to better enhance their hearing. So uh, most people are familiar with sharks being super good at smelling things, but actually the first thing a shark will do is hear its prey. It's very keen on that low frequency sound of struggling fish and other organisms in the water. Um, so they can hear that from very far away. Um, also, because sound travels four to five times faster through the water, um, sharks will always hear their prey first before they do anything else. So this allows them to kind of hone in on where that prey is. Now, like I said, sharks do have a very keen sense of smell. In fact, some shark species can smell almost over half a mile away. Um, this could be blood. People think of blood in the water, but what they're actually picking up on is those amino acids in the blood. So amino acids are basically what makes up like the building blocks of DNA, and DNA can be found in blood and other tissues. Um, so that can be floating around in the water, and they actually pick up on those certain acids that um, they're keened into. So just because you cut your leg in the water doesn't mean a shark is going to come find you. Um, they're very um, used to those senses of fish type blood and what makes up fish smells versus human smells. Um, so another interesting thing about shark um, kind of senses and what they use is most people have heard that sharks have a sixth scent. Um, this is true, it's called the ampullae of Lorenzini, or electroreception. So these are basically small little pores at the top of the shark's head, and sometimes they can reach down past the eye area as well. So they're basically all these little small pores that cover the shark's head, and um, basically what happens is as electrons move through the water, or electrical impulses that are given off by fish, or any um, thing that moves. Whenever you move a muscle, it triggers that response and actually sends off these electrical impulses. Um, and sharks can pick up on these through these pores. Similar to how the ladder line is full of this gel-like structure, it also is in these pores as well. Instead of picking up on movement though, it picks up on those small electrons, which is basically a unit of energy that it can sense. So now that we've talked a little bit about the shark senses and what makes them different from all these other fish, um, it's important to say that sharks are an important part of an ecosystem and they deserve some conservation and protection as well. Um, they're not mindless eating machines. They do have a purpose in the ecosystem because they are mostly the top predators of any ecosystem. We consider them to be what is called a keystone species. So without these sharks, um, they would actually cause, if they were gone, it would cause tons of damage to the rest of the ecosystem. So an example of this would be if there were no sharks to eat any of the sea turtles out in the ocean, um, then sea turtles would constantly eat like sea grasses. Well, if they constantly ate the sea grass, there would be no sea grass left. And then the sea turtles would die because they had nothing left to eat. So this chain of events is what we call a trophic cascade. Um, when you take out one element of the uh, food web, it kind of impacts the rest of it. So sharks are very important to have in the wild. Um, there are many conservation efforts that go into helping keep sharks in the wild as well. Um, a lot of research is being done on their importance, um, which should continue to happen because we want sharks to be around for a long time. So with that, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Um, once again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. Um, and we will answer those, like I said, in a special video tomorrow at 11. Um, I hope you guys have a jawsome day and a fantastic week. And we'll see you later. So bye, guys.